an introduction to formal herb gardens. Hello and welcome to Video Jug. I'm Tom Cole, Head of Horticulture at Capel Manor College, and you join me in our interpretation of a herb garden. Since medieval times, running through Elizabeth and up to current day, herbs have played a really important part in all our lives. Herbs were key to controlling any ailment, to, for improving diet. A garden such as this, based on sort of 17th century design, is very geometric. Lots of symmetry, lots of bold colour, and above all of us here, you've got this wonderful rambling rector rose, which would have been actually bedecked in white single flowers. It would have been very, very heady. Most herbs thrive in a hot, sunny spot with good air circulation and well-drained soil. This increases the levels of aromatic oils, which provide strong scents and a great taste. As you can see from this planting, there's a whole mass of bees and other wildlife which are attracted to herbs, such as this cotton lavender here. This is Santalina chamisiparasitis. It's a wonderful Mediterranean type plant with this grey blue foliage and these pom poms of yellow flowers. You get insects like hoverflies and lacewing larvae, which actually love coming on here. They're a great sort of companion plant for even your vegetable areas or fruit plants. This is a plant that flowers very profusely at this time of the year and carries on going on through until early autumn. Easy to look after, literally cutting back into living wood just to shape as a ball or a loose shape ready for next year. Ideally you want to think about the overall height and spread of the plant, such as this uh, lavender or uh, Lavangula angustifolia, and this particular cultivar is called Hidcoat. It's quite short, it's only roughly about half a metre in height. Spacing is roughly around about 30 to 45 centimetres between one plant uh, and the next to create this very dense uh, effect. You also get these lovely flowers which are burgeoning with bees and will keep on going through until the first frosts. Then you have an option, either cut down then to just into living wood, and it has to be living wood, doesn't regenerate from old wood, or you do it in the spring. Another key plant to have would be something like this thyme. I put my hands in here and you get a massive aroma coming off. Very, very heady. Lovely little dainty white flowers with a pink tinge. This is Thymus vulgaris, fairly upright, um, very informal in shape. And again, the same sort of spacing, about 30 to 45 centimetres between one plant and the next. To create a formal garden, many decisions must be made regarding shape, paths, materials and planting. All these aspects take time and precise planning, so do not rush a design if you wish to make a big impact.